Hey guys, so again, not really a video, but I do. Re I'm serious this time. I really, really plan to get on track today and um, do my fast as well. So, the first thing I'm going to talk about, talking in it. So, Shakespeare, um, born in 1564, died in 1616, wrote about, um, 39 plays, um, and, um, the source of this play is from a story called Apollon, Apollon, uh, Apollon, Apollonius and Celia. Um, this play twelfth night. Um, and it was mere. It's pretty much an entertainment for um the people for Christmas. Um, that its first performance is in the Middle Temple Hall in sixteen oh one and the White Hall Palace in sixteen oh one. Um. It had many restoration revivals, and then contemporary ones like in 1916, The Old Vic, 84, The Guthrie, 2002, Globe, and um, it's influenced at least two musicals, All Shook Up and Play On. It's written around 1600, 1601, and this is. I would call this play a farce, definitely. Um, so, basically, the Duke, um, declares his love for Olivia, and, um, in the next scene we find this woman named Viola, who's found she's just been shipwrecked, and she's asked to be sent to the Duke after she realizes her brother, she, she well, what she believes is her brother was drowned. Her twin brother, Sebastian. Um, meanwhile, Sir Toby Belch, who bears, um, a strange resemblance to Sir John Falstaff, another Shakespearean character, being a fat drunk and all that, and I'll talk about it. Parallels between Toby and Falstaff. Um, Toby um, arranges Sir Andrew Agachief to woo Olivia. Um, so later, um, Viola is pre presented to the Duke, and Viola is in disguise as Cesario, um, a eunuch, and the Duke wants him to be like the middleman between him and Olivia. Um Olivia is kinda of bothered by her servants, um especially Festing and her steward Malvolio. Um her servant woman Maria arrives and she says there's a message from a young man who's here to see her at the gate. And Viola Cesario delivers love speech that the Duke gave her that she refuses to hear anymore. Um, but she keeps on pressing, and then Olivia becomes really fascinated by this, like, messenger, and asks Cesario about himself, his parentage, his, her, slash, parentage. Um, so... Olivia sends Cesario slash Viola back to the Duke to tell him that he isn't that she doesn't love him. Um that she's like Duke him back and now you know that she's fallen in love with Cesario slash Viola and sends Malvolio after him after him with a ring. A token of her attraction to Cesario that she pretends Cesario left with her. Um, so we find out that Sebastian is alive and well, and he's going to the Duke's court. Um, 
Olivia gets, I mean, Olivia's servant, now the Olivia gets the ring to live to that Olive, which she didn't leave in this sparks confusion. Meanwhile, Toby and Andrew are drinking, and, um, Maria joins them, and Feste joins them, and they're all, like, having a good time, and Malfoy scolds them for being drunken idiots, so they, so they decide to play a trick on him, and say that Lydia is in love with him by writing these love letters. This is really farcical here. Um, so... When the Duke talks to Cesario, he knows that he, slash she, is in love <clears throat> with somebody, by the way he, like, is, by his eyes, um, her eyes, <laughs> and it's clear that Cesario, slash, Kyle is in love with the Duke, but the Duke doesn't know that, um, Meanwhile, um, Malvolio gets letters and thinks Olivia's in love with him, and Olivia just falls more in love with Cesario, declares her love. And so, what happens is, Malvolio learns of this, and he plans a duel with Cesario, which Toby arranges. And so Sebastian comes to the court and during the duel, um, because Cesario kind of backs out and stuff, a Antonio mistakes Viola for Sebastian. Um, Antonio is <clears throat> the servant to, uh, not servant, is a friend to Sebastian and says, you have my purse, and then as he's being arrested, um, he's like, Viola, he's like, I don't, I don't know who you are. And then, but when she, she hears it's Sebastian, she goes to look for him. So, Sebastian enters, and they mistake him for Viola, and they have a fight. And then, Olivia mistakes him for the sister, who's actually dressed up as Cesario. And, um, he falls in love with her. And then Feste is dressed as a curate, and, oh, Malvolio's in jail now, so, um, Feste visits him as a curate. Um, there's just this kind of scene with Olivia and Sebastian. Eventually, all is resolved, the Duke is with Lyle, and, and Olivia with the Duke, and Malvolio plot is sort of resolved, and the siblings reunite. So, talking about, a bit about the characters. Um, okay. So, we're going to start with that day, um, Maria, Toby, and Andrew. Um, they are pretty, only those Toby and Andrew stars, and Fast and Maria are common, they are pretty much at one level socially, while they're more economically different, they're socially on level, they drink, and they sing loudly, and they chat, and they play childish jokes, and, I don't know, they're like, the idiots of the play. Um, Malvolio goes from this, I was like, uh, you guys are such losers, to, Sort of, I would say, like, smitten with love and totally transformed, and then starting a duel. So, um, 
that we have a lot of fools fools in this play on um, in particular. We won't see them as much as the Duke as we'd like, but the Duke is snapping up with Lydia, last second ends up with Viola. Um and Lydia ends up with Sebastian. Um so the twins have found their matches. Um, Vala is cross dresser of the play, and she's. So we saw this in Athy Like It, and one of the plays I haven't read, Version of Venice, and we see it in um, Mad Theater and Hamlet and Midsummer Night's Dream. <laughs> Just so much cross dressing. Um, the whole thing about women pretending to be boys when the thing is boys were pretending to be men. I mean boys sorry, boys were pretending to be women. So um on stage. So this is a kind of meta thing that's going on. But um ultimately I guess Viola is cross dressing raises certain sexual questions about Olivia. And Olivia is basically the most well, Olivia and the Duke. They're nobles of this place. She's a countess, she's a duke. Um they should be matches that they're not meant. So they it's a carnival esque thing that they end up with more common characters such as um Sebastian and Viola. Um some very comedy bears and brothers unique is Viola and Sebastian are like the twins. Um Comedy Bears and Tiflis. And Minikimus is in Brothers Minikimus. Um, and yeah, that's. that's oh, I need to just talk a little about Sir Toby Belch. Um, and, how, and a bunch of these characters, how they remind me of different Shakespearean characters. So, I can't think of a good example for the Duke and Olivia. Um, well, Kind of parallels to Midsummer. Um, um, every there are a lot of suitors for Olivia. Um, some parallels to Kissing Kate. It's not from Kissing Kate. Taming the Shrew. Um, Bianca had three suitors. And Lydia has Andrew, this Sebastian, she's in love with Viola slash Cesario, the Duke is a suitor, she has four suitors, so, um, you do see that Taming the Shrew kind of thing with several suitors, and Olivia, and, um, with the Duke, I guess, some parallels to Theseus and Midsummer Stream. Um, actually, no, not really. I, I I'm trying to think of a good parallel for the Jews. I I can't think of one right now. Um, but that day with Touchstone. Um, and as you like it, a later play. Um, King Lear. Um, he. Parallels the fool, um, I'm trying to think who else there is, who's another clown, um, it's touchstone, fool, I can't, I can't think of the other fool that I'm trying to think of. I mean, there are a lot of clownish characters in Chase here. Um, 
But Maria, I do see parallels between her and Mistress Quickly and Mary Wise Windsor and to some extent the bodiness of the nurse and Shakespeare's from Juliet. Um can't think of one for Andrew. Um, Sebastian and Violet, definitely the antipolises of comedy bears and Violet um, has strong resemblances to, um, uh, what's the character? Oh, Rosalind and As You Like It. Malvolio, I can't think of a good one for him. Toby, though, definitely a lot of resemblance between him and... Sir John Falstaff, they're both fat, they're both drunk, they think that they're younger than they really are, they're foolish, they're sexual, they're likable yet not likable, they're tricksters, so, um, they're very farcical and at the same time satirical, so, we... There are definitely parallels between Sir Toby Balch and Falstaff. I can certainly write a paper on that. Um, especially looking at Mary Wives of Windsor. Um, not so much the Henry plays, but because Mary Wives is a comedy, um, Sir Toby Balch and um, Sir John Falstaff doing a character comparison. And again, they're both sirs. They're both noble, but they're they seem more common than they their title suggests, so um yeah. So some of the main themes in this play, love. There are a lot of love triangles I will attempt to draw it. Um something on if I can just find a pencil. Be able to draw large enough. Hold on. I think I have a pencil. Oh, I do. So, and I'll hold this up. So, we have Andrew after Olivia. Who is after. And the ones that I'm going to draw a circle on, those are a bit work. Oh, I'm just asking Olivia. I love. Final of Cesaria. So not gonna, if it's a two way line, if one is two ways, it's going to be like they end up together. So Valo and Cesario. I think that is it. So Um, so, I don't know how well you can see this, but here we have the lovers, Nyx, and 
on the plane. We have Andrew with Olivia. Then Andrew with Sebastian two ways. Olivia with Viola one way. Viola and Duke two ways at the end. And yeah. And I mean yeah, Olivia Duke, so he's in love with her, sorry. Okay. So Alright, there's the triangles. So that's all that's going on with love. Love's a big theme in this play. Um, another kind of theme is follies with all this farce going on with them playing the trick on Malvolio. Oh! I am so stupid. Malvolio. I forgot Malvolio. There we go. So, there's the diagram. Um, Malvolio. Yeah, yeah. There's a trick with him, so there's a lot of follies. But I guess the main thing is gender identity and disguise. We see disguise with Viola and Feste. Um, we see identity with Sebastian and Viola. In past day, um, we see gender bending with um, Viola, and all these go into gender studies and just. Thoughts about identity and the disguise goes into carnivalesque elements. Um, all these do tie in together. Um, so, <clears throat> and yeah, so, oh. Uh, in my analysis, I want to say, oh, one thing I did want to talk about, um, so, I was looking at my Riverside Shakespeare, and there's an interesting thing I read, down to 12th minute, Let's see if I can find it, okay, so, it says, it is argued that the original audience was meant to recognize Olivia as Queen Elizabeth. The Duke is a visiting Italian Duke. And Malvolio is a pompous controller of the royal household, Sir William Nollies. So, um, it was supposed to be a compliment to. The visitor from Italy sent a flattery Asian king and bait an unpopular court official. So, I'm um, playing a trick on Malvolio, just making fun of somebody who's unpopular and is <clears throat> like the queen's old. But oh, look, she has so many lovers, and um. And I also compliment the dude because Orsino is Orsino ends up with a character Orsino is loved by Elizabeth. So I mean Olivia, who is basically the son's Queen Elizabeth. Um there's definitely class Ashes, um, and then Carnflas turns, as I said, with Malvolio getting into the barbaric, do the plot that Fast Day and Maria, Toby, and Andrew have set up for him. Um, and 
I mean, we have the nobles again, like the Duke and Val and I mean, and the middle class, Sebastian and um, Viola, um, and again we have going through lower. Um, there's I, I did talk about identity and sexuality. Um, there is possible erotic things with Olivia, although it's just myths misunderstanding, kind of like, uh, what's the name of the character now? Do you like it? Phoebe. Is it Phoebe? Yeah, Phoebe. Um, there is similarity between Phoebe and Olivia to some extent as well. Um, And I think gender roles speak for themselves, and that there are parallels to comedy bears, as you like it, kiss me Kate, um, a whole bunch of these plays. Um, and did I say as you like it? Yeah. Um, overall, it's a hilarious play, great performance, great themes of identity, but, um, not as strong as the. As the not that strong a fifth act. And yeah. So that is all I have for As You Like It and not As You Like It, sorry. Twelfth Night. And and I'll be working on the soon. Actually